Hello and welcome to my channel Geography on your tips. Uh, I am going to sum up some of the map works which are going to come in class 9 in your second midterm examination. First of all let me start from the geography chapter 3 drainage. This is not there in the syllabus from the theory point of view only the map work is there and that too only for identification. So these are some of the lakes which are marked with the light blue color and these are some of the rivers. So in your question paper a river may be marked and it will be marked as A or B or C and you will be asked to identify or name the river. You will not be asked to draw the river in the exam but you may be asked to locate and label these lakes like Wolar Lake which is in Jammu and Kashmir, see its location, Sambhar Lake of Rajasthan, Saltwater Lake and then Chilika Lake. Here you will find a dent and that dent only is identifying Chilika Lake which is again a lagoon, a saltwater lake and then Pulikat Lake which ha you have to mark in Tamil Nadu, not in Andhra Pradesh. You just have to make sure about that. Rest are the rivers, Indus River, River Satlaj, Ganga, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri. You have to look at the delta areas, okay? Which delta area is donated for which river? If it's here in Odisha, you understand that's Mahanadi. If it's here, the northern part, it is Godavari. The southern part, it is Krishna. And then the southernmost, you'll find it Kaveri. So here, children, you may find it difficult to identify. You just have to remember the deltas formed by these rivers. Then you have the Narmada. The longer one is Narmada and the shorter one is Tapi. After that, this chapter map work is done. Now we come to our next chapter, chapter number 4, which is our climate chapter. Now what is the difficulty that you find, children, you know, is that, that this is a physical map. And in the examinations, you are asked to locate in the political map. And then the syllabus part. Everything is not there in the syllabus. Another thing which confuses the children is this annual rainfall map given in your textbook. And this is the seasonal rainfall map. So when it comes with the examination, in examination point of view, you have been given only two things to mark. The areas which receive less than 20 centimeters of rainfall and areas that receive above 400 centimeters of rainfall. So again to make it very easy I have made a map for you. Now go through this map. Don't forget to identify these Andaman Nicobar Islands and these Lakshadweep Islands here. Rainfall is more than 400 centimeters. Then you look at observe these parts. Receiving more than 400 centimeters of rainfall and only these two parts receiving less than 20 centimeters of rainfall. This will come for identification. They will give you they will mark these areas and you will be asked to identify that identify that what kind of what amount of rainfall these areas are receiving that's it so it again becomes very simple now after chapter number four uh, your syllabus is coming with natural vegetation and wildlife chapter in this chapter you have two maps one is regarding the wildlife sanctuaries bird sanctuary and national parks now here again they will it will come for identification now it is important here for you to understand that if we come to Rajasthan we have national park also we have wildlife sanctuary also and we have a bird sanctuary also and all of them are approximately at the same place so what will happen you know you if they write that mark the bird sanctuary Identify the bird sanctuary. So naturally you should remember that it is Bharatpur. If they will say that identify the wildlife sanctuary. Then you have to remember that wildlife sanctuary in Rajasthan it is Siriska. And if they ask national park of Rajasthan then you will mark, identify it as Ranthambur. So this is confusing. Again we come to Corbett and Rajaji national park. Okay. So wildlife sanctuary and national park. So this you have to remember that Rajaji is a wildlife sanctuary and Corbett is a national park. Dachingam again, it is a wildlife sanctuary of Jammu Kashmir. Now when we come to bird sanctuary of Ranganathi too, you have to mark it, it will be in Karnataka. It will already come marked in the paper. You have to just recognize it, okay. Then you have Madhumalai, 
which is a wildlife sanctuary, Simlipal, Kanha, Shivpuri, Manas and Kaziranga, they are all national parks. Apart from that, you have one more map which is on the different types of forest which are found in India. And the map is all given in your textbook, this map. At page number 45, if you will open your textbook, you will find this map, children. And here again, they will mark any place. Suppose they mark a place here and they will ask you to identify the type of forest which is found here. One of the question papers, they have asked in Sikkim. They have marked Sikkim and they have asked. So, this is all mountain forest. Here we have six types of forests in India. Tropical evergreen forest, which is the darkest shade. The areas where rainfall is very high, you will find tropical evergreen forest. Mangrove forest where there are the delta areas of the rivers you will find mangrove forest. So these are something very simple to identify. Mountain forest, the Himalayan mountain ranges occupy the places of the northern part of India, northern, northeastern part. So here you will find mountain forest. Here you will find thorn and scrubs and also in this area. Why? This Because this is a rain shadow area. Okay. So therefore this area and here you will find and then rest of India, most of the part of the India you will find tropical deciduous forest. So again this will come for identification, they will not ask you to mark it in a separate map, you need to identify that. So this is all about the geographical map pointing. Then you have from history also map pointing, history chapter number 2, see children. Socialism in Europe and the Russian Revolution, major countries of the First World War. That is the question for map pointing. So you have two powers, central powers and allied powers. In central powers, you need to mark Germany, Turkey, Austria and Hungary. Allied powers, you need to mark England, France, Russia and USA. So see, central powers are marked with the blue pen. So you see here, Turkey, just above the Mediterranean Sea towards the eastern side, Germany, this just below Germany, southeastern part you will find Austria and together with Austria you have Hungary. So Austria, Hungary, Germany, Turkey, these are the central parts marked with blue and with red color I have marked, see this is England, France. Russia and USA. So these are your allied powers. So this map is from your chapter number 2 of history. Now we come to another map of history which is showing the major countries of the second world war. Nazism and rise of Hitler, this chapter. Axis powers are marked with the red color and allied powers are marked with the blue color. So you see blue color, USSR, this is your allied power, USSR, UK and France, okay. And then you have Axis powers, among them will be Japan, Germany, Italy, okay. And USA was again a allied power. So these are the complete map pointings, just go through them once before entering your exam hall or just at towards the end of your preparation so that it gets registered in your mind and if you find that all these map works are useful do share them with your friends and do like and if you have not subscribed my channel channel kindly subscribe it thank you